Welcome to TYT Sports, everybody. Ben Mankiewicz, Rick Strom. Thanks for dressing up. Thank you. I appreciate the day after the Super Bowl. Big day here at TYT Sports. Clever North, baby. Yeah. The Spartans. It. Yeah, it's good when you see a guy uh, wearing his high school sweatshirt when he's got a professional job. My mom got it for me, yeah. so it, uh, it makes sense. I just sense. want to warn you, right, wearing a high school sweatshirt purchased by his mom, I'm telling you, that guy does not get laid a lot going forward. <laughs> just keep that in mind. Yeah, it, you've told, yeah, you've, you have, you, you cannot have a, make sense of the girlfriend I you have. You inexplicably so. have a tremendously hot, seemingly functional girlfriend, but whatever. Believe me, it baffles everybody who works here. <laughs> Super Bowl 47 last night, uh, Ravens, uh, the big win over the 49ers, 34-31. So mm -hmm. much to talk about with this game because yeah. it was two different games. It felt totally over to me. Uh, the moment Prior to felt, the blackout. Felt, prior to, the, at halftime, forget yeah. the, I said at the end of the first half, I was talking to a Niner fan, and I said, the key here, the 21-6, you guys get the ball, score a touchdown, make it 21-12, maybe go for two, maybe it's 21-14, sure. yeah. get it to 21-13, we got a game, and then he pointed out, which I had already forgotten, he's like, no, the Ravens get the ball first. And I was like, oh, well, I think you're done. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then, just to not even counting, the, considering the fact that uh, Jacoby Jones might take the kickoff back 108 yards, 28-6, it felt like that Niner-Seahawk game, yeah. that Monday night or Sunday night game, I guess it was, where just they were never... They never made a move. They mm -hmm. never came back, and the Seahawks dominated them. That's what it felt like. Uh, well, and there were just a lot of three and outs. Like, yep. Man, there were a ton of three and outs, especially for the Niners, because you thought that Colin Kaepernick would have that sort of ability to create more plays in the first half, and not just through Frank Gore, you know, Vernon Davis who, if they won, could have easily been MVP, um, had a tremendous game, over 100 yards receiving, along with Michael Crabtree and Frank Gore at 100 yards rushing. You would think if Kaepernick throws for 300, all, two, all three of those guys go for over 100 in their respective categories. They would have won. Obviously, they lost. However, you would think in the first half that they would muster better drives, that they would, you know, they would use up they a look, little more clock. Yeah. I mean, there, was, there was nothing they, to their offense. They look terrible. And then the blackout happens, and you come back from the blackouts, third and 13, you had 34 minutes. That's how long it was, right? 34 minutes? 34 minutes. Yeah. Had 34 minutes to plan a with play. With the epic job that CBS did yeah. covering the uh, Well, I want to talk about that too, but third and 13, they come back from the blackout. And again, third and 13 is a tough conversion in the NFL. But again, it seemed like, I mean, it's Kaepernick scrambling. Not like he fourth ends and up, 22 with Ray Rice. He ends up throwing fourth and 27. I 27. Think, Ray Rice. Hey, diddle, diddle, yeah. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, he, uh, and he ends up throwing that, you know, rolling out, no chance at a significant completion. Delaney mm -hmm. Walker, I think they picked up five or six yards on the play. So, it just seemed 28-6, Ravens got the ball post-blackout. It just seemed so done, yeah. so done. Uh, and then, of course, it turned out to be a totally different game. Significant moments for Kaepernick where I felt like we saw a guy who was a young, inexperienced quarterback. He, had, he made some very big throws in the game. Oh, he yeah. recognized oh, yeah. when to use, when to run. Big, a lot of yards with his legs. Obviously had the touchdown run, some big first downs. Read option more successful in the second half, too. Yes. Oh, well, obviously they were much yeah. more successful in the second half. They Everything put was. Up, put up 23 points in the second half and ended the game essentially on the five-yard line. Mm -hmm. Two big throws in this game. The two-point conversion that would have tied it at 31 mm -hmm. and the fourth down throw. Plus the throws prior to that, two of the throws prior to that in that series. They did run once. I have a, lot, I have a few feelings towards that. Well, one of, one of them, however, uh, not to cut you off, actually I am, uh, but on the fourth down play, uh, even at the five, you would think that the greatest receiver of all time would have got the ball once. Greatest receiver in the history of the San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> yeah. No, I can't think of anyone better. I can't. It's, uh, John Taylor. Now Dwight no, Clark. No, I don't know. I don't J. J. know. J.J. Stokes. Not right. J.J. Stokes. Yeah. Right. So uh, you would think that one-on-one -on -one coverage with a 5'10", 5'9", corner, whoever it was, it was Kerry Williams or Corey Graham. Corey Graham, former Chicago Bear. You would think that they would go to him once. They did not go to him at all. They ran the ball with Michael James. This is uh, when they're down at the five. Given the ball to Michael James, who got from the seven to the five, a guy who had, uh, like, I, I, I'm a player I like, and I think the Niners will yeah. use going forward. He yeah, played yeah. well against the Falcons, but he'd already fumbled. A rookie who'd already fumbled. That surprised me enormously to get the ball to Michael James. And he only had Michael three James. carries the rest of the game after the fumble. I mean, he hasn't got a ton of, a ton of carries. No, more, uh, in the, in, more, in the, more in the last, more against the Falcons than I think he had right. in any other game. No, I think he had like eight that game, and then he had five and three respectively in the other games. So it was surprising to see him get the ball right there. But then they go Crabtree, Crabtree, Crabtree. One of those was a burn timeout, which obviously cost them more uh, seconds when they got the ball back on the Ted Ginn uh, punt return, you could say.